Kind of what were your takeaways from tonight? Didn't play well off the win. Um, uh, just didn't, didn't uh, quite get the, the move back um, to even when we got behind there. Uh, Dave's ball looked like it had some potential off the bat, but checked up just shy. It could have been a difference and put us right back in it. But, you know, they, they came out to their credit score early, and then they did a good job in the fourth of, of not only just getting on the board, but getting on the board with two outs. Grand slam was a big swing. And then uh, we just we didn't do enough behind it. Um, so not, not, not a, a, a well-played game from the standpoint of, of having to um, dig in there and, and go uh, big score in order to make up the deficit. We didn't do that. A lot of balls kind of hit to that center area that huh? you mentioned, yep. Dave, and on both sides. Was yep. that kind of what you guys envisioned and tried to you know, get as balls hit towards the middle? Or is, is that just kind of how it played out? No, I mean, listen, when you hit, to have timing on pitches, the middle of the field is a good place to start, but very difficult to actually determine where you hit the ball, right? I mean, it's, it's a hard thing to do to hit the ball, let alone place it. At times, you might hit to the right side to get a runner over, but sometimes when you hit the ball hard and it leaves your bat, you just, you gotta be okay with it. Like, I hit that ball hard, and once it left my bat, it, it, it travels. We did hit some balls hard, but um, yeah, we, we stung some balls, hit them some hard outs. That's part of baseball. If you're pitching, you want to hit in the middle, it's a good place to let it get hit, not down the line where it's a little more tight. But I mean, you know, we did, we hit some balls hard. Um, the process for that particular set of bats on the guys that did that's a good process, you stay with it. You always take a hard hit ball, you know, you prefer a fall, but, but again, like I said, we, we had some hits. We didn't quite get some of the, the bigger hits that we needed, but the young men that pitched for them, there were some good arms on the mound. They threw some balls up there too. Pretty good life. So they definitely did their part to make it tough on us. They 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 deserve a lot of credit. They, they played well today. They beat us. I mean, you asked the question earlier. I mean, just because you played the two East Coast and beat them doesn't mean you're gonna beat them every time you play them. I mean, if, if one set of circumstances dictated the game, it would be a very different game. It's just not like that, you know. So tonight was their night. They beat us. Got to give them the respect they've earned by how they played. And speaking to your pitching, you guys had about eight eight arms, if I'm not mistaken. You can see the see the mound today. And uh, I was yep. curious, is that more of, because I know Wichita State was getting success off the bats, is that more of, okay, it's a, it's a weekday game, or excuse me, a weekday game, am I trying to get more arms out there for experience, or trying to? Well, <clears throat> we started the guy that we have had great trust in, he's been a really good contributor here for four years, felt like he'd give us a good start, he has a good sinker, good slider, good change up, and the top of their order, you need those pitches. To their credit, they, they swatted one out here and got an early lead. Uh, Brennan is one of our best young arms. Um, we, we need to get him to the mound. He's a, he's a big factor in our pitching staff. He started a number of games this year. They got a big swing of the bat against him. Um, Benzer is a kid we've used in some clutch situations as a very effective lefty. O'Toole threw the ball great. Uh, his usage had to be very limited because he's a candidate to pitch Thursday in the conference opener since we're in a short week and we can't just run our pitchers out there without letting them recover. And the short week causes you to take those things into account. And so with Nolan out, um, Evan needs to be available for multiple touches on the weekend, as does Ben. So these are all moving parts of, of a team and strategy of how you manage a team. Um, Kate Chatwell has a good arm. He came out good and lost a little air after a couple of hitters. Uh, the, the ball's coming out of Gabe Davis's hand exceptionally well. Jansen's a kid that's got a great arm, just got to kind of hone it in. And Baden's a guy that's pitched a lot. So all those guys have great value to our team. I mean, this is not a five-man pitching staff. Pitching staff where we need contributions up and down the line, and they're important to us. So some days you get them, some days they get you. They got us in a couple spots. Josh, you were a catcher. What do you uh -huh. think of the way Chase has been playing? Yeah, I mean, he answered those questions very honestly, but <clears throat> I do think what he said is <clears throat> he does take great care of himself, so he has the discipline that many young players at this age have not learned yet. He has great discipline. Uh, he's trained for this in junior college. He was a a very durable player. The junior college coach raved about his toughness. Um, so I think he's got a, a mindset built to catch. Uh, he's a, a very physically strong, lean, muscular, powerful kid. That's a really good athlete back there. Uh, I actually think he really likes it. I think he's thrived on the consistency of being back there. I've seen that. Compliment to him. I mean, all those things are yeah. on display. Physical yeah. toughness, strength, durability. Very good. Yeah.
super important archer. What about the way he's hitting too? He seems yeah. like he's seeing the ball really well too. Been great. He's been great. I've left him down there just because just when you're catching sometimes the, the management of the game is a lot to put on your shoulders and so he's in a comfortable spot. I've just try to leave him alone. Um, he's been fa fabulous at the bottom of the order. He's done a great job. How have you seen uh, Benji's development? Since the early part of the season, I know it's taken him a while to get swinging, but I think since March 3rd, he's bumped his average up from 200 to almost 360. Yeah. How have you seen his development yeah. on, on both sides, pitching and hitting? Well, um, he's a very gifted player. There's been some some real impressive swings uh, that he's taken. Uh, he's a very fluid, natural hitter. He does some things uh, exceptionally well in the batter's box, so that's been very impressive. And uh, at times on the mound, he's also shown the, the upside and, and the skill that we knew was in there. Um, surgery he had and recovery and getting himself back into elite pitching shape is still an ongoing process. A lot of guys that go through that probably hit their stride, you know, 14, 15 months. I think he's sitting there right around 14. And so there's been some really good things so far from him. And I think it's only going to get better. They were eight for 15 with runners in scoring position. Is timely hitting something you can practice or is that just something that comes and goes with baseball? Well, it's, it's important. It's, uh, it's a mindset, it's an approach, it's a discipline because the types of pitches that are thrown with runners in scoring position, right? Uh, usually more breaking pitches. Um, yes, it can be worked on. Yes, it's a skill. The guys that make 20 and $30 million a year doing the major leagues are really good at it. The guys that make a million or two aren't as good at it. That's why the superstars are superstars. You know, so it's a skill to deliver in the clutch and to be able to deliver against the pitcher when he's making his best pitches. Because usually pitchers, they, they, they have an ability to zero in even more with runners in scoring position. And you usually see their best pitches in those circumstances. Uh, you also see the best relievers come in with runners in scoring position, so you have to face Typically, somebody's best up pitch out of the bullpen, which is usually a breaking pitch. So you have to be a good breaking ball hitter. So yes, all those things are they, they wrap into why certain hitters can kind of separate from the pack and why certain hitters bat three, four, five, six, where the at bats usually have somebody in base to, to knock in versus guys that are great table setters who maybe do a great job of getting on. So, yep, no doubt it's a, all those things. Touched on keys a little bit. Uh -huh. um, he got his uh, got a outing today, and not the most ideal for him. But he hasn't played the most. So how important is that for him? To even if the result isn't what he liked, how important is it for him to just see that mount time? It's important to learn from the mount time. Mount time is valuable if you learn from it. And uh, Jansen Will, he's a good kid, he's got a great arm. Uh, mount time is a great teacher. It's the ultimate teacher. And uh, yeah, no doubt about that. Mound time is one thing, but quality mound time and growth from the mound experience is where we're trying to go. What do you think he can really grow from from today's performance? Oh, I think he probably saw that he early on in that inning, he threw some really close, tight pitches that were maybe a little too fine early, maybe a little catch a little more of the plate with his stuff and maybe not give him a few base runners. And then he, he had a few hitters, he just didn't finish them. I think he got to two strikes on a handful of guys and didn't quite put them away. So. Maybe trust his pitches early, catch more of the plate, put him away a little bit. When you're when you're throwing as many arms as you did, uh -huh. um, you know, obviously getting those guys experience. What are some of the things you're trying to pinpoint and take away from the game tonight? Um, well, you want to see the work that's been put in on the side translate to the game. So you want to see the maturity and mound presence that's been worked so hard on to develop. Uh, come come together in competition. You want to see execution of the pitches. Um, you want to see our guys handle um, the opportunity to compete so that they can get more opportunities. Um, yeah, I think you're looking for the entire the entire package for each kid. You know, how's the guy competing? How's the stuff? How's the execution? Uh, how are his secondary pitches? Is he locating his fastball? Did he handle the running game? You know, all those things. I mean, you're looking to evaluate. You know, I I don't. I understand the midweek game stuff because it, the game is played at a day that is determined in the middle of the week, but we look at every one of these games super important. Um, at times you do have to factor in the weekend because you have to have your um, matchup uh, pieces ready for the weekend. But again, we're in a little bit of a, a shuffle. 
um, this week with our rotation. And it has to be shuffled, and we're in a little bit of a shuffle with some of our usage, with some of the injuries that we've taken. So that's that's that's, that's something we deal with, and what we need is just to continue to grow as a team and pick each other. That's it. It's just part of the the growth of a team. As much as everyone would like for everything to just fall in a perfect sequence and just be easy, I would love to have one lineup, one set rotation, one set this. That would be great. But it's not the season we play. You know, it's hard to get to that point. Sometimes you, you get there, but we're still growing. I mean, listen, got beat by a good baseball team tonight. We'll learn from it and get better.